to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video just a reminder some great news the design of experiments for 21st century engineers the mini tab version has just been released. I know for those of you unfortunate enough to have selected Minitab you have a great deal of difficulty in understanding this software so we've created this special version of this text with the Minitab screenshots. The link to lulu.com where you can buy this book is in the description below and of course you also have the option of purchasing Drink Tea and Read the Paper which is the perfect book to go with your Green Belt or Six Sigma Black Belt training. The link to lulu.com for that book is also in the description below. And of course the other thing that we'd really love you to do, please go to buymeacoffee.com and make a small donation. All of these things, the purchase of the books and the donations, they help keep the channel moving. I'm really grateful to all of those people who are currently donating. Many thanks for your support and your help. And now, let's get on with today's video. Welcome to the latest video. And in this video newsletter, what we're gonna talk about is how to get 95% confidence in your CPK value. Okay, now this, this was a question that somebody asked me. Um, it's a slightly strange way to phrase it. Um, I, would never, I would never think of asking for a confidence level in the CPK. So I'm gonna give my answer to this, this question um, as best I can. I'm going to answer in the way that I think the statistics are interacting with each other um, so that if you really want 95% confidence in your CPK and somebody's demanding this maybe because it's a medical situation or something that's uh, a little bit, um, you know, the, the risk is high if you don't get your CPK right, then we're going to talk about a mechanism that you might use in order to do this. So first things first, you're going to go to the process, you're going to take a sample and you're going to use the sample to work out your CPK. Now the sample I'm going to recommend is 30 pieces minimum. Okay, so by taking 30 pieces, it's a good sample size. You're probably going to get a great confidence interval on your mean. So it's going to be a nice tight confidence interval. So it's not going to necessarily concern you, the confidence interval. But of course, the confidence interval for the mean has a potential impact on the CPK. So, okay, we collect the data, we work out the CPK. So let's just... Um, I'm going to make the CPK quite good. So let's say it looks like this. Okay, so I'm going to say that's a CPK of about 1.4. Okay, now let's say I want 95% confidence in that in that value. And, and actually, it doesn't have to be 1.4. This can be any CPK level that you want to kind of transform and say, I've got 95% confidence that it's that as a minimum. Now, of course, what's going on is we're sampling. So we have sample error. Every time we, talk, we take a sample out of this process, it, it could be in a slightly different place. So how can we ever know what the real average of our process is? Well, of course, we work out a confidence interval. And what a confidence interval says is, well, look, that's where your mean fell in your sample. But if you keep sampling, you'll probably see the mean move in this window here. And we can be 95% confident that the real average, because this is just an estimate, the real average is somewhere in that window. So if we work out a 95% interval, and you can work out 
99% intervals, by the way, um, a 95% interval, what we can say is the mean for this distribution, we are 95% certain it lands in there. Now, of course, what this means is that although this is an estimate of what's going on, and therefore this is an estimate of the CPK, the, the, the distribution could be slightly to the right, it could be slightly to the left. In other words, we could go either way, slightly closer to the tolerance. So maybe we're not totally confident that we're at 1.4 on the CPK. So how do I take into account this, this confidence in the middle? Well, the way I would do this is to add the two standard deviations together. Because the confidence interval is not saying there's an equal chance of you being anywhere in that bucket. It's saying that your sample error will have a distribution. And because this is the 95% confidence interval, this confidence interval is actually four standard deviations wide. Okay, now that's four standard deviations for the error of the mean. is isn't four standard deviations of this thing. It's four standard deviations of this. So, if I take the confidence interval, so let's say my confidence interval was plus or minus two. If I take that confidence interval and I, I divide that, that interval by four, I get the standard deviation for my sampling error. And so that would equal, obviously plus or minus two equals four. If I divide four by four, that's my standard deviation for sample error. So this thing could be doing that a little bit just, just by the, the fact that I'm sampling. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add that number to the original standard deviation I got here. Now let's say the original standard deviation for the blue distribution, let's say it was four. Okay, so I'm gonna add the standard deviation for this to the standard deviation for this. In other words, I'm gonna define what that pink shape looks like. Now what I can't do when I do this is that. That is, not, that is not the correct way to add standard deviations together. The correct way to add standard deviations is like this. You square them. So four squared is 16, one squared is one. You add them together and you get 17. Now because I've added the two squared values together, I now have to take the root so you can see that when I take the root, I'm going to go back to something quite close to 4. I'm going to put this down as um, about 4.2, I think. That's as much as I'm going to, I'm guessing a little bit. So I'm going to say my new standard deviation is 4.2. What I'm now going to do is put that into my CPK calc. So I will enter the original mean. I'll enter the new standard deviation, which is 4.2, not 4. Of course, what does that do? It degrades the CPK a little bit, and we get the pink shape. So you can see, though, the difference between them isn't that massive, especially if this confidence interval is pretty small because you've taken a reasonable sample size at the beginning. Now, of course, when we degrade the CPK, let's say it goes down to 1.3, we now have 95% confidence that it's that as a minimum. Could be better, but it's 1.3 as a minimum. Now, if you don't like that number and you think this is a, a large enough component, of course, what could you do? Well, what you could do is work out a new sample size. 
how tight do you want this to come? So if you know what your, your aim is for the confidence interval, you can use that value to work out the proper sample size to get that. You can use that sample size. You can drive this sampling error distribution to be much smaller. That will contribute a lot less to the additional standard deviation. You'll drive this down and maybe you'll end up at, I don't know, 1, 136, 138, something like that. But you'll get the result that you want. Obviously, if your CPK is a disaster, so in other words, if it's like that, reducing the sampling error isn't gonna solve your problem. By the way, you'd still be 95% confident that that's what's going on, but of course, what have you gotta do? You gotta work on the process. So it's a strange, it's a strange request to be 95% confident in CPK. That's the way that I would answer it. If somebody else has got a different methodology, I'd love to hear it. If somebody thinks that my methodology is missing something, that would be fantastic. But for me, if you want 95% confidence in your CPK level, you add your, stand, your process standard deviation to your sampling error standard deviation, and you'll get the, the sort of the true standard deviation, if that's the right word, and you'll get your confidence to 95% for CPK. Thank <laughs> you.